Hello and welcome back to the channel, Dan's Timeless Classics. Today in the workshop we've got a 987 Boxster and today we're going to be looking at an airbag fault. Um, so this car has the airbag light on the dash. Um, we've reset the airbag light, it's come back on again. We've fault checked it, there's multiple codes and it doesn't seem to be any one thing in particular. So common things would be seat squib, seat belt, steering squib, um, and generally a fault with any one of the airbags in the car. Now, what we've also looked into is to the fault codes, and it all seems to be generic that they are one after each other in numerical order. Um, so with a bit of advice from Scotty at Barnes, it would appear that this is because of a spike. Now, a spike is a surge of power that can be caused from an accident um, or potentially jump start in the car now we know this car's had no accident damage it's had a bit of paint on the front bumper but we've investigated that and it's very minimal so nothing that would certainly trigger an airbag light off so we believe it's a spike from jump start in the car off of another vehicle now we know that the vehicle was sitting around for quite a while so this would make sense so if you've jumped the car off of another car over revved the other car put too much ampage in it can spike things like this. So it's a spike in the ECU. So the cheapest way to fix this, otherwise you're into a new ECU from Porsche at a thousand pounds, plus then the programming of that into the car by specialist or Porsche, you could end up with 1,500, 2,000 pound bill. Today I'm gonna to show you how to save money, how to remove the device yourself, and where you can send it off to, to have it recoded. Then plug it back in and play. Airbag light is on. When you turn the ignition onto the car, obviously you'll do the oil read and then after that it will show you that you have an SRS airbag fault. Um, normally once you start these cars, most of these lights will go out, but if you've got an airbag fault, it won't go out. That light there on the bottom left will remain even under ignition starting and it will actually come up with an error on the screen to tell you that you have an airbag fault. So one of the first questions you'll all ask is uh, where is this airbag ECU and how do I get to it? Now this isn't the easiest one to find in the world and it was YouTube of where I found it which is why I've made this video so hopefully it will teach others. Um, the airbag ECU is actually stored behind that centre console part. So you see where the centre console comes down, there's a bracket and the airbag ECU is stored in there. So we've got to remove that part of the centre console and potentially some of this part of the centre console too. This is the same for a 996, 997, 986, 987 like this car. So that's the first job to do. So that's what I'll start doing and show you how to do it. First things first, with anything to do with airbags on a car, whatever work you're doing on a car, but certainly when you're doing with airbags, anything electrical or anything like that, always recommend disconnecting the battery. Um, it's a very simple thing. It's obviously under your front, what we call a front trunk. Um, if you don't already know that, it is obviously under there. Just undo those little clips. That panel lifts out and the battery reveals itself. 10 mil spanner, undo either of the terminals. I generally take them off both. Um, you don't have to take both off. You can just disconnect the plus and leave it earthed, which is that side, and this side is the plus. The battery does normally tell you as well, plus and minus, but you can follow the earth straight to the chassis of the car. So that's sort of fairly obvious, I think. So first job, once the battery's disconnected, the first thing you need to do is get a plastic trim tool like so, uh, with a sharp edge on it. You can use a screwdriver, but obviously bear in mind it will scratch. And get it underneath to remove the gear gator. You'll feel the like metal clips will pop like that. All the way around, oh, that one came off as well. So then the gear gator is removed. Then you'll see that there's two locating torque screws there. That one and that one. The other two are underneath that blue part. So now what you've got to do, a bit trickier, you've got to separate that blue section there. And we're gonna do this by using this trim tool, wedging it in between until they click like that. 
which will separate it and basically make that come loose. Once it's loose, like so, do that both sides and then it will slide out from the front. You may need to put the car in gear for this stage. Do the same both sides to run it down there so that you're twisting it until it comes loose like that. Once it becomes loose, you can then remove this blue section to reveal the other bolts. Bit fiddly, um, but it is out as you can see. It's got clips, angled clips. That one actually broke off, so it'd be a bit tough to get that back in, but clips up there as well. And then those metal clips there are where the gator holds in. Um, so obviously it was fiddly, so be aware. And then we can expose all the torque bolts to then remove the silver part of the center console, which is this lower section. Uh, because our airbag ECU is right back under here. So we've got to get as much of this out as we can so we can get in there to get a socket, to unbolt it, to then basically unplug it and take the unit out. The tool for the job for these four bolts is the T20 torque head. You see that when it comes into pixelation. So undo all four of those T20 bolts. Get yourself a pot or something to put these somewhere safe. If you haven't got anything to hand, the ashtray is probably the best place as it's right by where you are. Couldn't get my gear knob off for love nor money, so I've just pulled it all out the way and folded it back. The next job now is to... Now you'll see we've exposed the side of the centre console. We've got a T20 torque here, and if you feel here, there's a hole there. And the reason why there's a hole there is because there's a T30 torque in there, which removes that piece of carpet trim. And when we remove that, you'll see the exposed other T20s for the back of that part of the centre console to pull that forward. You can just about make out the ECU there. You see it? The silver sort of box, that metal box, that's the airbag ECU, that's what we're going for. So obviously we've got to undo this, this, this to pull this forward because that bolts down through the chassis. So the center console's got to come out of the way, but most importantly, that's got to come out of the way so we can get down onto the bolts that hold it into position. Once you remove that trim with the T20 Torx, undo the bolt at the bottom as well, just so that that's loose so it comes away, the bottom of the center console. Then take out the side pods using your trim tool. So again, you've unbolted the side pods from there. So just follow it along. Pop in these front clips, there's one up behind the glove box, one at the front and they'll just give it a tug and that comes out as well. Another thing I'd recommend doing, <coughs> you can see the airbag ECU here, the other thing I recommend doing is going on Google Images, eBay, anywhere, Amazon, wherever you can and find an image of your unit because they all they can vary from car to car, they're in the same location but my 996 one has four bolts and they're like a security nut. I can already see these uh, 10 mil bolts, so I've got the 10 on a socket with uh, a little bit of an angle, uh, the adjuster head, so that I can get in there to undo them. And from Google Images, I found out it has three nuts, um, three fixings, two this side, one that side. So I've already undone that side. Now I'm gonna undo these two. And hopefully I can get this thing out without taking anything else out of the car, that's the plan. Try and take out as least things as possible. Bit fiddly, but there you go. I've got them out, all three of the uh, nuts. As I say, I Googled the image, so I found out it had three fixings, and all three of them I managed to get out using the knuckle-headed attachment on your socket because they are sort of down and round at that angle, like that. So there's two this side, driver's side, one the passenger side. So now the box, the unit, 
has got some movement in it. It's sort of come away, but it's still plugged in. So there's another black plastic plug here. I'm going to try and move out the way. I move this wire out the way, which clips onto the side of there, which is an antenna, I think. Um, so I'm going to try and move some stuff out the way so I can try to get that unit out coming out this way um, by disconnecting it here and bringing it out here so I don't have to remove any more of the center console. So that's my mission. So I managed to uh, cable tie up this black uh, plug. So I unclipped the black plug and managed to cable tie it out the way and then pulled out this foam bit of insulation which goes over the ECU. And now I've got a really good view of the ECU. Um, I can see it's loose, it's ready to come off those spikes. Look, you can see if I, uh, if I hold the light right. Um, if you see, if I lift my finger underneath it, it is loose, um, but it is still plugged in with that big yellow plug. So I'm gonna try to unplug the yellow plug, which is gonna be a two-handed job, but without removing this blue trim because it's a part of the center console and goes all the way down to there. Obviously, it'd be easier if you want to do that, but you'll need to remove the whole entire center console. Um, and then I've got plenty of room here to lift that out. So if I can unplug it, I can lift that out, no problem. So let's see if I can do it. So as you can see, she's out. Um, it wasn't too bad, actually. Knowing these German plugs the way I do, I use the white tip of this to push the orange lever on that yellow plug. You see how it's uh, a lever? Because if you push it all the way back, it undoes it. Pull it all the way forward, it does it up. Uh, and then the box unit itself, as I say, the free fixing unit came out easy then, no problems. I, the hardest bit was hooking it over the top of that last stud because then it hits here. But a little bit of jiggery poker, it only took me less than a minute uh, and I got it out and I sort of pulled here and just made enough room to slide it out that way. So that's the way to do it because it means that I haven't taken out the majority of the centre console. That's all still in there. So airbag ECU is out center console is pretty much still in so let's review the tools and what we did to get it out so tools needed and required were t20 t27 the 10 mil socket on um, a little bit of an extension with the knuckle head that was key to getting into those bolts when it was in the center console i used a small ratchet one chunky trim tool and uh, a torch is always good because you need a torch so the first thing we remember was the t20s that take separate the blue and silver trim that wrap around the center console part um then undo those with a t30 that's hidden in the middle of there i didn't spot it the first time around because the 996 doesn't have that and sadly i broke that one so hopefully i can save you from doing that and the um the T20s in the back of there and the one in the lower blue part to allow it all to maneuver out. So that was the tools and all that I removed from the car in order to get that airbag ECU out. We didn't take the whole center console out um, and that part obviously, which was the trim um, that covers that. So the top half of the blue that wraps around the center console. Uh, I said I'll include some models, so I thought I would. Uh, it's a Boxster, so I thought, well, we better put some Boxster models up. Um, yes, for those of you that know your Boxsters, it is a 986, not a 987, uh, but they're cool. These are a part of a magazine collection. Uh, they're made by DNA High Speed. They're just very quirky. They're not the best quality like Mini Champs, 143 scale, but I just like them. I have to get a 987 one now, and I, as we've done, and there's an S there with a hard top and a bit of an aero kit on it, which is very, very cool. Um, I'll have to get a uh, a model in each video I do now, won't I, know if we do anything like this. Well, thanks very much. Um, and remember, like, subscribe, click the link in the bio um, for um, some recommendations on some tools to use. And yeah, and then now the job to do is to send this off <coughs> and I'll let you know who I'm sending it to. And they're basically going to recode it and put it back to factory settings to delete all the problems and coding inside there. Then it's a case of reversing this process. Which... So not the easiest job to remove the airbag uh, ECU, but we got it out. And we managed to do it without taking out too much of the center console, which means once it comes back and it's reset, should mean for an easier installation. 
Um, so I'll let you know where I'll send it off to. Um, I'll get it decoded um, and I will put a link in the bio to this video of who does that. Uh, I've been quoted £128 with the VAT and it's a three day service. So I'm going to box this up now and ship it off and hopefully get it back in a few days and we put it back in. Finish the video. So the ECU is back and believe it or not, it's not the original ECU. So when we took the ECU out this car and sent it off, we wondered why the airbag fault was on there. We know the car has not been in an accident and we believe it was spiked. So jump started from another vehicle, over amped and therefore it's caused a spike which triggered all the codes, all the fault codes. Um, on further inspection, the car had had a water leak and water ingress had got into the ECU system and it had shorted out the circuit board. So crash data, the company I sent it off to, were unable to um, restore that unit. But however, we was lucky enough, they were managed to remove the data from the system, hold the data on file, why I bought a second hand unit from Stephen Strange, Douglas Valley Breakers, thank you, which cost me around £180 delivered straight to Crash Data, who then programmed this ECU with my information for this vehicle. So now we have the original information on the used um, unit. So we're coming in at around about now, including the programming and some postage. We're still under the £400 mark. Now remember, this unit to buy just from Porsche alone was over a thousand pound plus VAT, plus programming, probably somewhere in excess of 1,500, 1,600, who knows, maybe 2,000 pounds. So we're still only at about 400 pounds. And if my unit was spiked and wasn't flood damaged, then it would have been much cheaper. We looked further into the car. The cause of the leak was the standard scuttle panel, um, drain holes getting blocked, Water had leaked into the footwell. It's dry now. Obviously, I know that from buying the car. I also could tell that the car had had some sort of flood damage from this before, but didn't realise that it got to this unit. So it's not the end of the world. And like I say, a much cheaper price. So now what we're going to do is plug this back in, refit it back to the car, plug it back in. And um, the next job then will be to see what lights are on. The airbag light should remain on. Then it's just a case of taking it to a Porsche specialist or anybody with a PWIS system to be able to reprogram the car to clear the fault codes. Once the fault codes are clear, ignition off, ignition on, the light should not um, return. So fingers crossed. Um, I'll get this in today. Get this car over to Scotty at Barn Sport. The next time you see it, I'll be at Barn Sport. So fingers crossed. Thanks again, Crash Data. Morning. So we're off to Scotty and Barn Sport so we can get this ECU reset. Um, and let's go. Sun's out, roof down. We'll have a fun time. See you soon, Scott. Beautiful day for a drop top. Great cars, these 2.7s. Real smooth engine, real easy to drive. Obviously convertible as well, which is a bonus. It's one of the wonders of the box stuff is that the roof comes down and don't be underestimated by these cars don't be uh, fooled by thinking it's the hairdresser's porch it's not these beasts really go and they handle absolutely superbly so in fact you've got to do a lot to a 911 to make it keep up with one of these around the track we have arrived we are here at barn sport in blantford forum beautiful day the absolute porsche masters so the boxster is about to get plugged in and reset by Scotty at Barn Sport. Um, and hopefully the SRS light goes out and stays out and then we can get on with the detailing and get this baby on the market. Look at this weather, this is the weather you wanna be driving this car. For sub 10 grand, you can be. Here he comes with his uh, magic device. Scotty, this is the proper You've obviously got all the proper Porsche system set up, not the sort of average snap-on gear. No, the, no, the snap-on stuff doesn't really deal with, um, deal with it, so yeah, you've got to run the P-Wiz software. P-Wiz, that's the actual Pro Porsche programming software. So I've cleared the faults on this car before and they've come back, so we've reprogrammed the ECU. So now, in theory, this ECU is 
like a new one so it's good to go now Scotty's got to tell the car's brain to accept the new ECU so you'll see the airbag light is on and hopefully by the time he's done and I'll refilm this it'll be off right so he has done the plug-in and reset the code so now when we get in the car fingers crossed turn the ignition on all lights come on as they should depress the clutch start the car and there you go the airbag light is out that one there's just the seat belt one and if you click on the function you'll see there is no SRS fault that's it job done thanks very much Scotty for the programming crash data for the reset and Douglas Valley breakers for the ECU so thanks for watching and remember like and subscribe and I hope this video has helped you to save money and at least helped you to fix this problem.